I'm from Sydney, Australia. Uh, I'm a company director. My name is Roxy Kelly. I'm originally from the States and I'm a geologist. I'm from Berlin in Germany and I'm a PhD student. I'm a general manager of a financial services business. I'm currently at uni. Work for an insurance company doing the fraud inquiry side of things. 40 individual journeys, pushing themselves mentally and physically to do something they'd never ever dream of doing. 20 weeks, we're going to commit to you guys to turn you into cage fighters. Oh, I'm absolutely petrified. My experience of MMA is nil. My only experience coming into this is watching it on TV. I'm not very fit, to be honest. Experience of MMA so far is beer in hand at the pub, watching it, thinking I could do that. What a fantastic concept. Which person on this earth doesn't want to be a warrior? There are a lot of people that doubt me, and I just want to prove them wrong. I'm here to uh, try and work towards getting my confidence back. And ideally be an inspiration for my three boys. I'm here because I want to change my life. Three, two, one, let's do it. Tell yourself in your head why you're here today. Don't you bow your head and keep your eyes up to see what's happening here. Come on! At the end of the day, this shit is hard. You've really got to want to be here and realise that there are going to be good times, but there are also going to be really, really tough times. You're going to fucking fight or what? Suck it up. Elbow's going to get big. Let's go. Elbow's in further. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Give me that. Give me that. Hold on, that's right. You want to be here, you've got to work for it. They're taking a step out of our normal lives into an extraordinary world. You've got this, come on man, you've got this. Now, here's Brett Miami, come across, close. Everything else we can give you. Six months we can train you to fight, we can give you good fitness, we can give you strength, but unless you've got the ticker for this, there's no point in you being here. So Richie, Jens, how are you guys doing? Good, good. Lots of warm over here. It, yeah. You know, it looks like the weather is uh, treating you well there in Australia, huh? Yeah, it's, I heard it's a negative 20 with the high of zero back home in, uh, in Iowa. So, uh, you know, I, I threw on my, uh, I got my, my cold hat on just in case I want to feel like, you know, I don't want to be an ass as I'm sitting in a t-shirt and shorts. But so, you know, I'm trying to represent the best of my abilities, but you know, the weather's it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. I appreciate that. And you know what? You're right, Jens. That is, that is pretty much uh, the temperature. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> So I, I got to ask you, Richie, man, when when you came up with the idea for Wimster Warriors, um, what, you know, what what precipitated that? What what made you uh, start looking to do something like that? Um, I was it was two prong really. One, I wanted to test myself as a coach. You know, I've been teaching class and teaching amateur guys and a couple of pro guys for so long. Um, I just wanted to. When you're teaching class, you've always got like a mixture of people as well, you know, people that flow in and out of class and trying to keep up with guys that experienced two years, some guys are new, and it's I just really wanted to to concentrate. The idea was to train one person and just concentrate on that one person for like six months. Um, and then basically to prove to so many people that anyone could do this sport, you know, it's, especially in Australia, it's such a spectator sport. You know, I always related to watching soccer growing up as a kid in England. You know, I didn't watch like the elite players in the Premiership playing soccer and go, I can never be like that, so I'm not going to kick a football around the park. It's a different mindset for a lot of people in Australia, especially they watch the UFC and they go, I can never do that, so what's the point of going to my local gym? 
So I wanted to try and get more people into the sport, get the gyms busy, you know, try and boost some of the fight gyms around. So that was the idea. So train one person, six months. They have to agree from the, from the start that they have to fight at the end. And I was just going to film it on YouTube and then put it out there just to prove that anyone can do the sport. So then I put it on Facebook and then we just had this huge response. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, I, I, the concept is, is beautiful. I love it. I can't wait to watch it, actually. And, you know, Jens, I guess I would ask you, coming from the fighter's perspective, you know how much the mental game plays in this sport. What is one of the things that's hardest to overcome with these guys? Is it the mental part or is it actually the physical putting in the work? No, you know what? I think they don't have – it's like the – I keep saying it's like the beautiful side of MMA. They come in here and they're eager and they're anxious to learn. And when you start speaking, they're paying attention to what's happening. It's like they have no premonitions of when you're dealing with fighters. And there's so many fighter coaches, fighter gyms out there that they know what I'm about to say. Kids walk in, they just have this, well, I'm a fighter. I shouldn't, I don't want to have to pay for this. I shouldn't have to grab this. I, don't, I know what I'm doing. I'm a fighter. I just want to fight. I want to fight. But the difference is with these guys and girls is, they're like brand new, like, I don't fight. I don't want to fight, but I want to learn and train. And so you can take all the beautiful sides and put it all together and meld. And I think in the beginning, it starts out physical because they're, they're doing their first workouts and everything starts to hurt. I mean, I just ran in the sand. Oh, I'm in pain beyond belief. After a couple of months when the physical sets in, you have that dialed in, then it starts to become mental. And that's the beautiful side about having this fight at the end. The bucket list is... It takes that mental side, and now we got to learn how to put them together. You're physically ready to get mentally prepared to step in there and put it all out there, and that's the beautiful thing about the to work. I agree. I mean, there's, on so many levels, I love the idea and the concept. Um, you know, and one of the things that I notice is you, you'll hear about guys, maybe they've been bullied and things of that nature, and they get to – training in martial arts. And one of the things that they come away with is a real big respect and discipline and uh, self-esteem and pride. And I can only imagine when you're starting with some of these guys, maybe that would be one of their biggest obstacles. And you see a different human being develop in front of your, in front of your eyes. Absolutely. I mean, it's the change in them, them mentally is huge in this series. And that's, I mean, the physical transformations, that happens anyway. I mean, they're going to lose a lot of weight. You know, they're going to get leaner and stronger. But to see, because they can, they can finish this series and in six months, 12 months, decide, you know, I've done it. You know, maybe I, won't, I don't want to train anymore. And, you know, the weight goes back on, etc. But what they get from this series, mentally, the strength they get will last a lifetime. And that's something really special to see these guys. And the change, like they say, the change in them is, is unbelievable. There's one particular girl that, we were chatting to about this morning. Um, her name's Anna, it's on this series. She struggled so badly in the tryouts. Um, so we had 100 people come down. We had six spots, 60 spots. We had over 900 people register. And um, she just, she kept breaking down. She couldn't, she couldn't get her head around the, being in that uncomfortable position and having people look at her. She was crying on the mat. And literally, I pulled her off back on the mat twice. She was like, I can't do this, coach. I'm not here. I'm taking someone else's spot. I don't deserve this. You know, and we were talking around. I saw another coach bringing it up. Now, three weeks in, this is the third week. So second day, two, third week. She's a weapon. She's a team leader. She's a team leader. She's yeah. the motivator. She's the one telling them, let's go, let's push. And then you can see it in her eyes. She's kind of the pace setter. She's, without a doubt, she's already morphed into that, that, that leadership role. And you can tell, I mean, right where she's probably most comfortable. And, and, you know, you guys, I mean, you've spent so many years in the gym dealing with the, you know, the alpha guys, the, the alpha females, let's say, and, and you've watched, you know, the problems. It's got to be rewarding to bring someone in that has no confidence or skill, let's say, and actually to mold them and, and, and see, see the leaders come out, you know. And it's surprising sometimes who actually steps up to be the leader. And it sounds like that's what happened here. Yeah, look, you, I would have never said, like, in three weeks' time, this girl's could be leading her group, literally leading. She gets in the middle and she ramps everyone up, spurs them on. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's a complete change. But I've said it before, and from 
I've been coaching like nearly 20 years now. This is the best coaching job I could ever ask for. Because like Jen said, everyone that's here wants to be here. They're putting their life pretty much all for six months to do something that you know, we've done and we, we love. And they're just asking us and they're just like, they're just sitting there. Just every single word, they're just absorbing it. And then they they hang around afterwards. They want to ask you questions. They make the notes. It's, um, yeah, it's amazing. It, you know, for me, I can only imagine what it would be like if I was to walk into the gym and then have Jens come over there to me and uh, say anything. Uh, <laughs> I would be a sponge as well, right? <laughs> all Jens yeah. needs, all you want to, Jens, don't give him space and don't give him opportunity. Because if you do, he's going to put you to sleep. Am I right, Jens? I have, to, I have those time. I have those moments that hit hard, real hard, you know, but, and that's thing that Rick, Rick's saying is, it, it's really the beautiful side. Everything that I love about MMA, I was saved, my, my life was saved for wrestling. Wrestling saved me when I was a kid growing up, I'm badly abused, you know what I mean? We know the story of the shotgun stuff in my mouth, and those athletics and the coaches, and it's that individualized sport. You know, you're gonna be an individual. At the end of this, you're gonna be that individual. So you spend the whole time trying to be on the team. You thought you're not on the team you're trying to stand out and stand to the side, take your helmet off, do whatever you can, try and be, look at me, look at me on this team. You know you're gonna be individually tested. You're gonna have to go out there, your colors, the way you feel, your emotions, everything's gonna be put out there on a stage for everybody to watch. And it's before that, you learn how to be a part of the team. It's that camaraderie and it's that building, that self esteem. Not only physically, mentally, you're getting that power back. You're getting to learn how to really deal with anything that life can throw at you because you're, you're handling it in here. Yeah, and so, I mean, you do develop that brotherhood uh, just like in the gym when you're training. Uh, so I, I would imagine that that part of it has got to be real exciting too because a lot of people in, that haven't competed uh, in sports they they miss that in life. I know for myself, having had that, you know, I, I was a hockey player and I, and I boxed. Uh, and then once that was gone, I just kind of, I didn't really know what to do with myself. Um, and so that's super. That's I, I really love uh, the fact that you guys are giving those guys a chance to, to experience something that otherwise they wouldn't. But you had to run into some obstacles, uh, Rich. What what were some of the problems uh, that you ran into with, you know, starting the show, Wimp the Warrior? Huh. How long you got? <laughs> I got all day, buddy. Yeah. The, the, the main one's financials. You know, I've been, the first series I did, I, I basically funded it myself. Um, did a YouTube, just did it um, online. And just because I, I wanted to test it, not only to test that I could coach a group of people, because it went from one to 20. Uh, no, 30 people, but also that people were interested in watching it. And then when it went viral and all these people were trying to get behind it and Jen's heard about it, we started chatting. Um, I knew it would be successful. And successful for me isn't necessarily dollar. It's about spreading the sport, getting more people in the gyms, making MMA grow mainstream, grassroots MMA. That's why I always refer to it. So that's always been a challenge. And it still is a challenge, you know, <clears throat> because the bigger it gets, the more money it gets, you know. So now we've got a TV production. So there's a lot of cost involved with that. Um, we've got this amazing academy now. There's a lot of cost involved in that. So as big as it gets, it doesn't get any easier. It just gets bigger, bigger costs, bigger outlays and bigger pressure. But, you know, I wouldn't change it. But in terms of the coaching side of things, um, I, look, there's not really, I mean, there's, there's a lot of challenges from a coach's point of view in terms of, keeping the people on the straight and narrow in terms of their mental um, focus because it's very stressful. I mean, and I, I make it stressful purposely. I don't give these guys an easy ride to, from the first session, you know. I'm always testing them. Always, I never tell them what's going to happen next. They don't know when they're going to be weighed in. They don't know when the team's going to be announced. They don't know when their training schedule's going to change. So they're always on edge. So it just makes them a little bit sharper, a little bit stronger day by day. And I said to the guys, you know, from day one, especially the morning guys, you know, their alarm goes off. That girl we were talking about earlier, um, she gets up at 3.30 in the morning. It takes her two hours to get here. And then she goes home, she's got family and work and stuff. So that's, that's strength there, just getting up every day, knowing that you've got that grind, 
none, you're going to be sore and it's going to suck a lot of the time with training. Um, so keeping the guys focused is a, is a big thing as well. And then just, you know, making sure that, you know, that they're going to get stressed. There's going to be tears. Most training sessions, there's at least one or two people that break down. And just putting those people aside and making sure that they're, they're good and they're focused and you can help them. Um, and normally it is just talking through certain, certain aspects, you know. They get too caught up, yeah. too stressed. Yeah. But, um, look, I think the main thing is to keep the business going and growing because it's got so much potential. And I, I want to see it reach where it can go. So I'm always pushing it. I'm always pushing it. Yeah, I, I have to, you know, if if I had an opportunity to watch it, I mean, this is a major network show to me. The name alone that is gold, Wimps to Warriors. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have come up with a better name, uh, period. And, you know, you you had spoke to the training side. You, you've been doing that. You've actually opened an academy to teach people to train and to coach. Uh, yeah. and, and so that you've, you've been dedicated to this for a long time. And yeah. So we're looking at, we've got a couple different sides. We've got your side of coming in from the coaching aspect. And then we've got Jen's coming in from the fighter aspect, who is obviously coached as well. I mean, on tough, uh, you know, that was, that was great. I, I love that, Jen. Um, awesome. It was. So the dynamic there is really, is really nice. I, I love the fact that you have the ultimate coach and then you have the seasoned you know, Hall of Fame fighter that is coaching as well. And that dynamic, uh, man, it seems to really work. Yeah, I think I think the fact it works is because, apart from thank you as the ultimate coach, I don't see, I'm a good coach and I've been doing it a long time, but there's having gens and the fact that having gens here as well, you know, three-time world champ, but we get on so well. Uh, we bounce off each other really well. when we, we coach together as well. So sometimes we're on the same map. And we just gel, and we've got very same, very similar philosophy in terms of fighting. Uh, he do something, and I'll be like, "That's exactly how I teach it," and vice versa, which is really cool. What do you, Jens? What is it when you get in there and, and you you teaching them boxing, striking? What do you see as the biggest problem everybody has? Keeping their hands up, tucking their chin, stepping well, you know, into the thing is it, with 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 these guys and girls is. And I tell them, it's, it's like speaking a language, all right? When I first walk in, if I just start, someone starts throwing Spanish down to me or my wife speaking Laos to me or something, it's moving a million miles a minute. Somebody, my, I always like to use mathematics. You ever look at two mathematicians who know math, they speak like it's a language. And I mean, it's a language of mammoth report. I mean, it's, it's a whole new world and they understand it and they can talk. So when I start talking combinations, movements, shifting, feet, things like that, it's, it's speaking tongue to these guys, you know, and girls. So what you have to do is, as I'm learning how to be a coach, because I'm now turning over from fighter to coach, is each person's going to hear it differently. So you're trying to throw out, Tony Pickton is my favorite. I love him. Always throwing out these little anecdotes, always related to the roaring lion and the swimming fish or whatever, you know, <laughs> cartoon or whatever it is. You're trying to get everybody so that they can understand it. Once they understand it and it becomes a language, now it starts to make sense. Now they can start doing it. So I hit everybody with the same thing, which is we need to build a foundation. A lot of people, they'll build this big, massive house right on the ground. Little rain, little wind, down it goes, right? But we want to build a massive, strong, sturdy, solid foundation. And that's what Richie and I see eye to eye is this foundation. From there, you can start adding walls. You can turn this. One day it can be a bedroom. Next day it can be a movie theater. You can add in and start customizing how you want your style to be if you have the fundamental basics. And that's where he, I, I'm a military trained kid. That's what won me a world title was those fundamental basics. So bringing that to these guys and girls, it's, it's just about getting to where it makes sense to them. And once it becomes makes sense, then they can start forming a habit. Once it becomes a habit, then they're dead on, and then it's just trying to, like, again, fine-tuning. Yeah. Man, I can I can really identify with that. And I, I guess I would wonder the difference from fighter and coach and then coming becoming the coach. Do you guys have any issues as far as the way you look at it or you want to, you know, proceed in training, or do you guys pretty much see eye-to-eye eye on it? Dead on. Yeah, dead on, yeah. Yeah, That's it's really weird. I mean, since I've been over from the UK, 
my style that I, I've trained in, I've never really found anyone over here that has the same mentality as me. You know, there's, there's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gyms everywhere, and they're great, but it's not MMA. You've got striking, Muay Thai, everything. And then you get guys that say, oh, you know, I'm an MMA coach, but they don't really understand the fit. You know, they've got a striking background. But, you know, so many coaches try and rush. They teach the big, nice, fancy punches and the kicks, etc., before sorting out the footwork. And I always say, you know, it starts from the ground up. Where you touch the earth, that's the most important thing, whether you're wrestling, grappling, standing, striking. And Jens is the same. We've got this. And as soon as we started chatting, um, the first series when he came over, I was listening to him talk to one of the guys in the last series. And I was like, it was like, it was so refreshing to hear someone that, the way I was coached. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. When he starts coaching, I'm like, oh, oh. And then he always, like I said, because we say things differently, not to interrupt him, but then it's, you just want to jump in and you add in that little like, okay, cause, and then all of a sudden, that's when you start realizing how many things like you forget. Because you start grappling with someone, you guys are on the same page, six, you know, you have just unfolded, oh, but about this, then we can go this, this, and this, and then everybody starts gelling, and then you've got just this crazy class going on, and everybody just having, it's like a freestyle. Everybody just starts having fun adding in, and that's the one thing we, that he and I have is, but it's that fundamental ground root basics that's, Number one, we don't overcomplicate that. We don't oversell that. That is that is what makes the world go round. It's those fundamental basics. You catch too many people, they're YouTube fighters. They want to learn. They want to know the knockout punch. I want to learn the knockout kick. I want to learn how to knock somebody out right now. I want to learn the takedown. I don't want to learn how to stand, breathe, hold my hands, move, close that distance, do anything else. I just want to be able to throw a knockout punch. I see on YouTube... I got a five punch combination. I'm just going to start throwing it. I'd rather throw that. Absolutely, by all means. You have no idea what you're doing. Go, go throw that five punch combo and see what happens. Exactly. Huh. And you know, I mean, my experience in boxing, if your feet aren't moving, you're in, you're in deep trouble. So until you learn to move the feet, uh, man, you, you just don't have that foundation that you're speaking of. Uh, and that is huge. And so when you build that, uh, obviously the bigger, the better the foundation, the better the fighter at the end of that six months. Have you guys been just shocked by anybody? I, I know that the young lady has surprised you from where she went to the, but is there some other guys that where you say, holy smokes, this guy's got power like uh, Mark Hunt, for instance? Well, they're coming in now, and that's the one thing that some of the some of the other seasons, are, they come in, they're going to start training here in five, six minutes. I'm going to have to peel off and start coaching. But that's the ones that they, they like, they want to continue. And that's the one thing that we're trying to create with all of this is a place for the wimps to warriors. They're, now they're warriors. Yep. And now what are they going to do? We want to start creating more. We want to get out there against other gyms that have the same wimp to warrior concept that are part of the team. And we're going to create that whole, I always use the real world, Road rules, challenges, they always do their seasons. They all come together and do these challenges. We want to start having season one against season two against season five in the U.S., season six, you know, the London team, things like that. Yeah. Start bringing in because they love it and they want to keep working. And there's, yeah, there's, you'll see some with the natural ability. And I have a feeling there's a few that are in this season alone. If they haven't figured it out yet, I'm going to really enjoy, like the juggernaut. I'm going to really enjoy watching a couple of these people. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. I'm going to really enjoy see what they can do. You know, for me, what makes it really good is that the shows that people have seen, like Tough, um, it's just such a different, such a different format. I mean, it, it's really not even comparable to what you guys are doing. And that's what makes this so unique is that it's real. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah. it is yeah, as real as it gets. Yeah, it's not. It's not reality TV. There's nothing contrived. There's nothing produced. It's literally we call it factual TV. Yeah. When we sell it into networks, it's factual TV. It's it's a human interest story. How can this person that suffers from anxiety or has never been to a gym before, never thrown a punch before, in 22 weeks step into a cage in front of 2,000 people and fight? That's the story, and that's what it is. And you know, and it's. I was related. I'm, I'm not sure. Is Master Chef big in the US? Master, Master Chef, yes. Yeah, yeah, Master <laughs> Chef. You know, I was related to that. It's massive in the UK and over here. You know, if I see a program about chefs, I don't want to watch it because I'm not a chef. But I'll watch a program about people trying to aspire to become chefs and their journey. You know, but we just punch and kick as well. So, 
it's a little bit more exciting. But that's the same thing. It's that it's that human interest. It's seeing someone achieve their their goals, um, and nothing produced, nothing contrived, no, nothing uh, manufactured. Yeah. It's just real all the way through. And you know that's that's what's really refreshing, especially nowadays with the environment and the shows that we have out there. That's what makes that really special, Rich. And I'll tell you, when you have legitimate people that maybe their personality isn't suited for TV, but yet they still get in there and they're doing it, wow. that that speaks volumes uh, to me. And, man, I'm fired up. I am fired up to see this. I'm telling you right now, I want to see this. There's been all these crazy shows where you've got four guys fighting four guys and climbing stuff and all this and that, it's just craziness. This is what I want to see. As a fan of MMA, as a fan of combat, this is what I want to see. Um, man, how 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 and when can I see it? Well, the first series you can watch on um, WimpsWarrior.tv, which coach. is the pilot. I'm gonna so coach. Jens is off. He's got to do a class. Jens, it's an honor, buddy. Thank you, sir. I'll talk to you again. I just took a notch off a bucket list. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, the first series is on uh, winterwarrior.tv. So we've got all our video content on there and interviews. Um, and then the last series we finished, um, which was um, we finished June last year, um, we're, we've now got a company that's selling that globally with approaching networks, et cetera, and, and trying to get that out there as quickly as we can. And now, again, like we're filming this one. But the last series was where Jen came in as a guest coach and he was commentating at the finale as well and, and this is, you know, you've had Roxy. You guys have yeah. spoke to Roxy, the story of Roxy. That's her series as well. And, yeah, some, some really great stories come out of that series. And, I mean, that right there alone, uh, where Roxy's at now, and yeah. the fact of how she started, that, that's got to make you feel good. It, it's the, honestly, it's the best job in the world. Isn't the best it? job. Not only are you teaching people to fight, but you're helping them. You're yeah. changing lives. And it's, it sounds really corny, but it's actually true. Oh, it is. I mean, you, you're literally taking someone that maybe is having problems with self-esteem or confidence or things like that in life that affects every aspect of their life, not just, yeah. you know, uh, you know, a fighting thing. You're, you're creating that character that's inside them. They didn't even know they had. And when yeah, you I've, see it come out, man, you've got to feel rewarded. Finale for me is, is amazing. I, I, I get goosebumps thinking about the last two finales. I was just you know, I was so proud. And there's a um, there's a picture um, that I have. Um, I'm, I'll send it to you, actually. There's a, one of the professional photographers on the day. They just captured this picture, and it's just a silent picture of my head. Yeah. And I'm cage side. The cage is here, yeah. and there's two of my girls fighting, and they're right, right next to me. And I couldn't say anything to them, but I, I just got this massive grin on my face. You know, it's like a proud father. Ex uh, exactly. Yeah. You, could, you yeah. could see it. And you know what? The beautiful thing is to come up with the idea and the concept and then to actually bring it to life and to see yeah. to see it do exactly what you wanted in the beginning and to see that happening, that's got to be rewarding. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. I mean, I just we just got to get it out there now. I want to get it out there. I mean, I'm chatting to a couple of gyms in the U.S. at the moment uh, because we want to – it's not just about the TV show. We want to try and – we want to license and, and put the program into gyms all around the world, speaking to gyms in the U.K. as well. So um, – we license the, the program and the, and put in because fight gyms don't make money. They yeah. just don't because you don't get the people through the door. Whereas you put the Winter Warrior program in it, people hear about it, you know, and they, they, there's somewhere that's a safe haven for them to train with like minded people, same kind of backgrounds, and all striving for this one goal and training together with great coaches. So, yeah, that's the next plan as well. You know, I, I can't. I can't see this doing anything but becoming huge. Uh, you know, Webster Warriors, the name alone says it all. And then when you've got people like yourself and Jens and people involved in there of high, high quality of caliber that, you, you know, like I said, you've been doing this a long time. You've been trying to teach uh, martial arts and, and teach uh, the ability to coach, which I know that's really hard. I've tried it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. there's an art to it. There really is. But it inspires me, though, because MMA has grown so fast. And maybe it's grown a little too fast in some cases, right? I believe so. Yeah, I, I do. I believe it's growing way too quick. The, um, the industry, the people that are in the industry haven't haven't grown with the sport. It just, yeah. It's gone too quick. And it's become a spectator sport, like I said before. 
you know, there's, there's so much scope for growth, but you need great coaches um, that, you know, that know what they're doing, not just kickboxer that's learned a bit of wrestling. You know, you need proper MMA coaches. You need good facilities that will, will people will go to, you know. You don't want, you know, I've done my time of training in church halls and, and holes in the roof and gyms. And, I've, you know, I used to train in squash halls. You used to get a squash court and put some mats down and fight my guys in there because there was nowhere to train, you know. Yeah. We've, we've come a long way. For me, the, what's really refreshing about the show and what you're doing is the integrity. It's bringing the integrity back. It, it's it's it more than just the entertainment value, where nowadays sometimes we're seeing fighters that maybe can sell more tickets as opposed to fighters that deserve that spot. Um, yeah. I think what you're doing really brings that that energy and and the excitement of that it's a real it's there you're watching these fighters evolve from from the wimps to the warriors so to speak and I and I think that that is beautiful. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, everyone that's on this series is here for the right reason. They're here because they want to challenge themselves. They want to change their lives, and they want to really put themselves out of their comfort zone. You know, they're not getting paid. You know, they're giving up six months. They're paying for the coaching. Um, and they're paying us to do this, um, to kick their ass for 22 weeks and then get in a cage. So it is, and it's like Jen says, it's the beautiful side of MMA, and it's what's missing at the moment. You know, it's, there's too much, like you say, it's all about the money. Yeah. So it's become all about, it's, it's going down the road of boxing, and it's, it's, it's a real shame. And I'm hoping that, you know, even if it's just a little bit, we're worry about getting involved, and if we can get exposure then you know get some more people into the sport and really expose the the grassroots side of the sport which is where it should be you know it's where it starts from yeah i agree 100 percent with that and you know uh, I've, I've been around to watch the sport evolve from the very 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 beginning you know into where it's at now and, and it got where it's at now based on the best fighting the best um not based on the entertainment but the entertainment is the best fighting the best you know for me yes so yeah. it's, it's exciting for me for the show and I man I'm going to do everything I can because if I can't watch it at my house I'm going to be upset and we're, we're going to YouTube this we're going to get this everywhere because to me this is gold Richie I, I, I really appreciate what you're doing and uh, man, it's a thank brilliant you. idea I mean it really is thank you Jim thank you yeah look we, we as many eyeballs can get on this as many people can get involved I mean ideally we'd like to get some investing, investment and some sponsors involved. You know, we'd love to come to the US and kick it off there. We've got gens. We've got a lot of people that want to get behind this, uh, but we just need the right people. We need some networks to recognize how big this could be, you know, it really could be huge. Oh, wow. um, it's original TV. There's nothing out there. I mean, you put TV, it's just garbage. It's the same old shit. Yeah. Just they're packaged differently. It is. You know, this it's is Real stuff. Yeah, and you look at what what's happened to you know the the Ultimate Fighter show. I mean, from the first season to where it's at now, it's it's yeah. it's now it is a, a production. Uh, it's more about you know that show it, than it is the fighters actually getting the best and competing. And so it is really exciting for me because this would rejuvenate. And I and I honestly believe that we get this in front of the right people. It has nowhere to go but up. I mean, this this could be big. It should be huge. I've seen a lot of imitators out there. Whip to Warrior, that is that is an incredible concept, man. And I can't help but grin every time I say it because I'm I want to watch it. I want to watch yeah. it. You know, I, you. I I have to thank you, uh, Rich, and and thank Jens for me too, because uh, you know you guys taking the time out of your day. You're doing this. You're right now in the middle of it. Jens is in there training as we speak. Um, and so, man, hands off to you, sir. Thank you. I Thank so you. much appreciate it. Any sh you, anything, any shout outs, anybody you want to holler at and get some attention? Um, look, I always like to thank my wife because she supports me. You know, I haven't made money in three years, but she's out there looking after my family and, and, and bringing in and helping pay the bills and stuff. So she's been a massive help for me. Um, and then, you know, we've got sponsors, Morgan Boxing over here that help get us out, Zebra Mats as well. Have helped fill out this amazing facility, um, and there's there's a I mean it doesn't really mean much in America, but there's a there's, there's a small company called Eat Fit Kitchen over here, and um, they're now supplying all the food nutrition for these guys, and it's and their coaches, which is great for us, which is amazing. But yeah, I just want to thank you guys for support. 
and um, please just keep spreading the word and uh, let's get this global. Oh, you've got it, buddy. I, you can guarantee that. You keep an eye out because you're going to see it. You really are. Rich, it's been awesome. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank welcome. you for the idea and concept. I can't wait to watch it. I'm excited. Um, man, it was awesome. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, Jan.